Hello, new world. And to all my G's. It's your boy, 2G's. And we're back, 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 back in the motherfucking building. Talking that nerd shit, anime shit, and that G shit. Whatever order y'all want to mix that bitch in. But, uh, I got a question. First of all, I want to introduce y'all to what we're going to call, going on from now, the mainstream mix-up. Where we talk about all the shit that we knew you guys watched growing up. And, like, not something that you had to search back in the days that was a jump-off, but something that you found yourself watching and knew that you wanted to keep watching this shit. It wasn't like, oh, just Saturday morning type cartoon where it was like, wherever this is at, I'm going to find this shit and I'm going to keep watching it. This is when you dedicated yourself to watching a whole animated series. This is the mainstream mix. With that being said, I got a question for y'all. What do you think is more superior? Magic or science and technology? Now, to me, my eyes... They both got their pros and cons. When it comes to magic, essentially magic is endless, kind of boundless. You can essentially do whatever the fuck you want to do with magic. You're able to, you know, from things like levitation to going invisible to switching minds with somebody or, like, make, turning somebody on fire, controlling fire, you know, these are all general aspects and it's pretty simple shit to do with magic itself, right? But if you dive into things that are like a little bit more tricky, you'll tap into some of the cons of magic. In most cases, magic usually has some type of consequence that you got to pay in order to to go through with it. Uh, I.e. some type of ritual or tribute or sacrifice, whatever you want to call it, a contract that you might have to sign. But usually, in order to tap into the stronger magics out there, you got to fucking risk a life, a soul, multiple people's lives, a servitude, uh, your loved ones. You know, you usually have to pay a hefty cost to be able to manifest and utilize all of this motherfucking magic and shit. So, what are some pros about technology and science? Well, I believe that, one, we've learned a good bit about our own uh, existence on as far as our fucking planet and shit. And I, I felt like technology definitely had a good hand in like keeping a lot of people alive uh, for whatever reasons and such. Uh, but then the cons kick right in right after that as there's a lot of technology that has been responsible for a lot of deaths. With that being said, you know, it's not that easy to just stay on one side of the pendulum as we look on everything else. Technology is sort of boundless as well, too. Well, it has a potential to be boundless because with more technology, we get more technology. So if you think of in a span, technology is only going to get better and that's going to make technology better, which is going to keep continuing to go on. I feel like both of them have the potential to be infinite magic and science. But what would like happen if you found a way to merge those two together? Magic, the magical spiritual contract side of the unknown and the information and the the knowledge of the the world the world in between from molecules down to atom, from atoms to molecules to you know what, what to elements and all the information that we've acquired that make up the foundation of our world what happens when that world of the unknown and the world of the known combine together that we get alchemy now in alchemy it's something that we've... It's something that people actually in real world has tried to dabble in and shit like that. Like, try to make actuality. But them motherfuckers were really just trying to come up on people, I believe. Like, they were trying to turn, like, ordinary metals, like copper and silver and shit, into gold. 
which is like some frivolous shit. What the fuck are you going to do with that? You got the powers of alchemy or to, or to figure out or to try to get to the next level of achievement in, in life, and you just want to make gold. That's, that's a fucking waste of time. Or other people were trying to do, um, I believe, uh, eternal life or, or or like the fountain of youth is, is part of like some form of alchemy or some shit like that, or they were trying to make a, a fountain of youth or whatever. But again, I, I guess... I guess that's more useful to people, but what the fuck is the point of that? Unless it's like, this sounds selfish to me, but whatever. That opens up the doors for a lot of things. Now, we weren't successful with doing it in actuality, in real life terms, but what I'm about to bring to you guys is essentially what the outcome of that would be if we lived in a world where we merged science and magic together, it could utilize it. And this is where I bring you to Full Metal Alchemist, as y'all can see. Give me claps in the building, please. I'm Jason, I need some claps in the building. Claps in the building. Everybody fucking love Full Metal Alchemist. For sure. So once again, fucking shout out to Adult Swim for putting everybody on. They kept us on the right platform and had everybody sliding on Full Metal Alchemist. And I don't want to cause too much conflict in this motherfucker. I really don't. But... I'm not talking about the first iteration of Full Metal Alchemist. Okay. And the reason why is pretty simple. It was good, and I'm actually thankful that they actually put that one in in front of the, the, the Brotherhood version because it opened up our eyes to seeing how the world of alchemy works. It, gave us the, it introduced us to the main characters, Ed and Al. We'll talk more about them later. It gave us the introduction to them, which was pretty cool, and the world of, you know, Full Metal Alchemist itself. But when it comes to storyline and general just, like, one animation and, like, you know, just whole project as a whole, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, to me, is just, like, far superior. And I just feel like that one has a more interesting tale to go along with the story. So we're only going to be, well, I'm only going to be focusing on that part. And if you don't like it, kiss my ass. But <laughs> now, if you don't like it, like, if, how about this? If you, I do want to see the other portion of that, just let me know. And I'll I'll cover that side as well. But, and I, I mean, the differences between them is pretty cool. Uh, there's some things from the original concept that I would like to have seen in um, Brotherhood. But overall, just Brotherhood was just better to me. So I'm going to focus a little bit more on that. So, with that being said, we start in Resin Bull. It's a little country. And um, it's a little town in the country of Amestris, I believe. I can't remember everything exactly. But we get with, we start with the family. You know, it's a family. Uh, mom, dad, two sons. Uh, we get uh, Trisha, the mom. We get home, Han, the dad. You know, anime dads. We get... Edward, older brother, and we get Alphonse, the younger brother, okay? Now, they live in this world, and as I said before, the world of alchemy is a thing in this world, right? Uh, This anime actually came out around 2009, up until 2010, so that makes it, like, right at the end of the mainstream mix, you feel me? Because anything after the mainstream mix, we're going to just put into, um, you know, the, the shit that's that's keeping the engines running for anime. So, at 2010 is the close-off for anything for the mainstream mix. Afterwards, we're going to put that in another category. But, like I said, like, around 2009, 2010, we got really hip to um, Full Battle Alchemist running through that good old Toonami and Adult Swim line. Uh, so, uh, it's in Resin Bull. And we were introduced to this family, uh, just straight off the back on some real, you know and love it and hate it at the same time. Anime dads will never fucking stick around, so ho and ho, they dad skirt skated, and it was up to the mom. She was a single mom, and she was raising up these two kids. I don't know why they always do that. I mean, I kind of do because they say that the, the father's always working in. And Japanese households, so you never get to see them. So that's the memories that they get. And you know how many times we've seen this whole shit? Every, let's just put up a list of all the dads who just, like, disappeared from their family's life. And just put them all right here. So we all got them all sitting around, Debbie dad category. Just lay them all out for us. And let everybody know, these dads ain't shit. But 
it's okay because they always come out to the back and they help. So most of the time, you know, most of the time. Ging, I'm looking at you, most of all, and uh, and Ash's dad. Yo, his, what? No idea what the hell happened to him. But I digress, as Willie would say. Uh, they, they grew up with their mom, single mom, and she was doing her thing with her kids and stuff like that. But their mom was dead ass sick. Like, dead ass, dead ass sick. So what happened is she ended up passing away. Now, in this world of alchemy, like I said, if you learn the interworkings of the structure of whatever you're looking to rebuild, you can utilize science and magic to rebuild them. You can do that. But with the magical aspect, it's going to cost you some shit if you're trying to go up to this tier of tinkering with life. And as kids, they didn't really understand that if they were going to go through with this, it was going to be quite a heavy toll that they would have to pay. So out of fear, they tried to bring back their mother from the dead. And they paid a hefty toll. And the younger brother, Al's case, it cost him his body. But in the literal terms, like body. The cost was his body. His soul, was, in essence, was still available to be there, but his body was, like, you know, totally taken away. And in order to stop, and with quick, like, honestly, this is pretty crazy because these kids are only, like, eight, nine, whatever, how they did it. But Ed, Ed with the quickness, decided if it's only his body that's going to be taken away and soul is still here and available, I'm going to bond his soul to the suit of armor and keep him around for the time being, so that's what he did, but you don't just be able to do shit like that, you're not able to just manipulate a soul like that without having to pay a cost, so even Ed had to pay a cost, and the cost of Ed's cost was his arm that you see here, and his leg, so he his left arm and his right leg stripped right off of his body, at the end of what they tried to it were assume was their mom, was this really grotesque looking ass fucking thing, and that was the remains of what they thought that they could do. So um, what they did was they dug up her body, you know, got some of her parts and shit like that, and just tried to use that. But as they learned quick and in the, the worst way possible, you're not allowed to just tinker with life like that and play with magic and think shit wasn't going to get fucked up. So they did, and they got the, the bad end of it. Um, they had a next-door neighbor down the block, and... I say down the block, but it ain't down the block. Like, I'm from New York, so it's a lot of down the block, but down the block is like 100 yards away. That's still fucking down the block, but it ain't down the block. That shit was down the block. All right. Winry is a little homegirl of this. She's like a auto mail maker. Her, her, she's a, basically an apprentice to her grandmother. And auto mail is nothing but just prosthetics. Like, But in this world of alchemy, uh, they got more of a touch when it comes to just general crafting. Everybody who seems to be able to craft anything has been able to really craft stuff. Like, it's see, this arm here is a functioning arm that Winry created. And Winry's, like, she's, you know, in the, her adolescent days and then when she grows up, when we see later on in, a, in like, the little skip that they have, she's still really nice at creating automail and they're functioning. They're nice and they're durable and she's at a young age. So it seems to be, like, Everybody is able to be super creative. Not only that, um, Ed and Al, they when they use their alchemy as well as they get older, their al the alchemy tends to be really crafted well. You know, I know you do have to learn about the materials and stuff that you're maneuvering and, and messing with, but for them to be so artful after they're finished with it, I think is another cool aspect of the show. The author, uh, the creator, definitely put a lot of thought in the things that they craft to make them look really cool as well. So, back to when they were making this whole, um, you know, creating their mother, recreating their mother, trying to bring her back. The cost that they had to pay actually allowed them to enter this, the world of the unknown. This is the part of magic that we still can't grasp yet. And from doing so, and not only doing so, but surviving the whole um, ordeal, they were able to do something that most people who can do alchemy can't do. Most alchemy is performed doing like using seals, you know, with a pen, your blood, piss, 
whatever, you can make a, a seal. And if you make this seal with the right symbols in it, that could be basically a tag to the spiritual world using the information of the, the scientific world to recreate stuff. So you get the item, you know the, the physical uh, composition of it, you use the basic, basic seals to make the contract or whatever, and you're able to maneuver the molecules and the matter of that to create whatever you wanted to create after that. As long as you have the right material to do so, you can do whatever you want to do. So within, within um, having that ability and seeing as they survived, they wanted to get two things out of this shit. First thing is they wanted to get their bodies normal. Second thing is that they still had this hankering to get their mom back. They knew that... Now, I can, some people should be asking, well, how did these little kids learn how to fucking maneuver, you know, a corpse and, and learn that the physical structure of this is and learn what seal to use to bring back a body? Well, it's funny that you asked that because it seems to me that it's way, way, way too easy for people to access this type of information and utilize it just like that. Now, most people have jobs. They do shit. They have families to take care of and stuff like that. But I find it funny that some children were able to learn this shit. Not only learn this shit, but, like, actually try it. You feel me? And go through the the tortures of it and then survive that bitch. I find it real funny. Because if you essentially think about it, they went to, like, a library, got some information, and then just started doing shit afterwards. And if your next-door neighbor didn't like you, he goes to the library and comes to your crib and just transmutates your house to destroy, you're going to be tight. You feel me? And it's just like, oh, did he just went to the library and learn that shit? Oh, that's some shit. The fuck? But they figure it. They, they, they understand that they got to go more. They got to do more in order to, to get this thing to where they want to be, to their mom back and get their bodies back and all that. Seeing that they're orphans now, they decide to enlist in the army. But not really to to serve the army for any actual purpose. They're doing it under the guise that they can get what they call a philosopher's stone. And the philosopher the philosopher's stone basically will grant you the one up that you need to do what you couldn't do before. Alchemy has its limits, and unless you want to pay the cost of those limits, um, you're gonna take you know body pieces going or or your whole soul going to pay the cost of the of whatever you're trying to do. But a philosopher's stone basically lets you omit that, and you don't have to worry about it. So that they were on the actual goal to go do that, and they ended up joining the military. So sometime after that, we see them traveling off. You know, when we make the uh, arm and the leg for Al, I mean for Ed, I always do that, so get ready for me to do that all the time. I get them confused all the fucking time. They She makes the automail for, for Ed, and... They travel to go to, to the military, and they go do their military shit. They meet in contact with Roy Mustang. We call him the Flame Alchemist. Nigga's hella dope because he can snap his fingers and set shit on fire. Everything is lit where, wherever you go. Uh, he's got these symbols on the back of his gloves, and those are the symbols that he uses to activate his alchemy, and he's the Flame Alchemist because of that. So um, he's pretty dope and super cool character. You'll learn a lot more about him. Hey, his lieutenant is, I think he's a colonel, Colonel Mustang, and his lieutenant is Hawkeye, Reza Hawkeye. She's mad cool. She just be shooting shit up. You know, she's a top shot to them. When they're going to go, so I told you guys that they were going to go join the military, but really just going to join the military because the military has a lot more information about alchemy than regular places have. So, like, they have their own personal library about alchemy where they teach you a lot of shit, because a lot of nefarious shit happens with the military. Now, if you could imagine that regular people have access, you see how these kids actually tried to do this, uh, if you're going to think of the information that's readily available for people, as opposed to the information that they're keeping hidden, you got to know some heinous shit back there, because regular kids can learn how to bring back a dead body. The rest of the shit that's hidden, got to be fucking treacherous. So when they go to to look and to find more about this uh, philosopher's stone, they realize that there's a lot more to the military than they think, and there's a lot more to a lot of things to the whole world that they live in. At the matter, they run into what we call homunculus, and a homunculus is basically a forged soul and body, and who forged them is a very good question. What they're here for is a very good question as well. 
One thing we know is that they're out for the Philosopher's Stones as well. And this is where the story really gets thicker. And this is when we really get to the meat and the potatoes of the story without giving you guys too much. Uh, they One thing I do want to point out, a couple of things I really like about it is uh, they get trained in, like, fighting arts by Izumi Curtis. She's another person that you'll meet along in the story. And she, de- she deeply connects to them in a really, really close way because, you know, circumstances and shit. And she's sort of like their adopted mom while they're doing the thing. She's a she's an OG. She's really an OG, for real, for real, for real. She walked through that whole snowstorm like a gangster. No cap. Uh, a lot of things uh, that we want to really focus on in Fullmetal Alchemist is that sometimes it's political, but it's political in a great way. I'm not really a political person that likes to talk about like anything like that. But the way how they handle you know war and... and um, in different countries and invading and all this stuff and, like, treaties and pardons between countries and stuff. It's really interesting in Full Metal Alchemist, and they do it in a really cool way, seeing as all the nations, the most of the nations that we really get introduced to are all neighboring nations, so they all have to go through their own trials and tribulations to go against each other and shit, which is pretty cool. Um, some characters that are really fun is Armstrong, bro, Louis Armstrong, bro, he's so fucking... Yo, dude, he's just a macho motherfucker that flexes all the time, and he's got this little curly cue and shit like that. He's one of my favorite characters because he's he's just so he adds a a, a lot of comedic value to the show in a really dumbass way. <laughs> he's just he's mad cool, so I fuck with him. He's mad cool, uh, and his sister's a fucking dog. His sister's a fucking dog. She was smoking. He's nice, but she was smoking many day, which is mad sick. A couple a couple of the neighboring countries. Uh, so we got Amestris, that's the main country, uh, where our main character, uh, character, uh, <laughs> where our main, Amestris is where our main characters live, uh, for the most part, and that's what most of our adventures are, are lying in. Uh, Xerxes is, in, is a neighboring country, uh, Shing is another neighboring country that actually practices different alchemy than the alchemy that's pr- uh, practicing um, in Amestris, which is pretty cool to me. You know, I didn't know there were different styles of, of alchemy back then, but because of, like, in actuality, this whole alchemy thing wasn't just started by one group of people. Different people around the world try to do it, and when you get different people doing it in different ways, it comes out differently, of course. And it's a it's a show that will teach you a little bit, because if you didn't know, what you didn't know about things that you see on a daily basis, like your own genetic makeup, not not your own genetic makeup, but your like physical makeup like, of what your actual body parts are made out of, how much carbon, the oxygen, the the calcium in your bones, the iron in your blood, those things that you didn't know, like it teaches you a little bit about how they function. Not too much in the sense that you're gonna be learning a whole bunch of shit, but it will spark your interest in the things that you see around you. I think that's fucking awesome. So I put that out there for it. And I definitely give a lot of shout outs to to them for that, but. One, and I'm going to tell you another thing. I don't watch shit if they ain't boxing. They be boxing in Full Metal Alchemist first. Yo, Edward Alric, though they pick on him all the fucking time for being short. He don't he, he definitely don't like that shit. This, he be boxing all the time. Straight up, and it don't matter who the fuck it is, bro. And then he's smart. That's the thing. Being smart on top of that is always the brain over brawn when it comes to uh, 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 being the best. It's always like that. It's great to have both, but it's usually your wits that's going to make you top dog. And he definitely uses his wits to make him top dog. And since he doesn't have to fulfill any normal contract anymore to do alchemy, since he broke the rule the first time, he has basic unlimited manip- manipulation of his terrain, of of you even. He can manipulate your body structure as long as he wants to, as much as he wants to. It, it, like it's It's crazy. From... The seven homunculi that all have different names after um, the seven deadly sins. We all know those. I don't want to say nothing about nothing because you guys definitely have to watch it if you haven't watched it. But if you have watched it, you guys know how lethal and how deadly those people can be and how cool they are because they add a definite spice. Some of the time, mo- most of the time, I was a huge fan of the of the um, antagonist <laughs> because they have such cool abilities. They're mad cool. And I'm going to tell you one thing. Greeling is the coolest character, period. He's my favorite homunculus. I'm putting that out there. 
I don't care what iteration. He's just so sick because they did it in both sides. Like he's he's my fucking favorite. But you guys should definitely fucking check out Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood if you haven't checked it out. Uh, it's definitely up there with some of the most goaded shows. You know, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten, ten times, if you ever had to tell somebody to watch something and they wanted to get the, their toes wet in anime, this is the best thing to do. First, in a theme song, be slapping too. Oh, they got some slapping ass theme songs that I forgot to tell you about. Yeah, I need to listen to those slapping ass theme songs. Eventually, y'all gonna be like me, like the rest of us over here. But with that note, I want to say that we're trying to make some creative and constructive changes. And it's taking a little bit of time, but we're going to make some moves. And we got some really dope shit coming for y'all. So hold it all, hang tight, hang tight. And we're going we gonna to vibe. We're going to catch y'all when we come back with this. It's going to be some flavor, but y'all got to hang tight and, and keep holding it down. So uh, it's your boy 2Gs. And I'm out this bitch, y'all. Take care. Be easy. Be solid. Stay straight. Later. What is good, y'all? It's your Uncle Willie son. We finally back, and I've been meaning to show y'all a lot of things. First things first, as always, new additions. So, the Gundam family got something new. I got a banshee. It's actually uh, Kenny's banshee. He literally built this like halfway in the time it took me to build most of this stuff. So, he said, here, finish it, and then keep it for the collection. So, lit. Just needs the decal stickers coming soon, coming soon. And then the thing I'm the most excited about is my Imperial Dramans. From Digimon, the uh, mega level of Pael Dramon, the combination of Stingmon and XVmon. If none of this makes any sense to you, you're watching the wrong thing. Or go and look that shit up. For real, for real. Mm. Now, I'm real excited about this. Now, for all the ones that, you know, My Hero, Naruto, uh... You know, Tokyo Ghoul, the newer stuff. All right, y'all, I love y'all. I promise I do. Y'all need to take a seat. Just just keep your ears open and just listen. Because this episode isn't necessarily for y'all. Now, I want to talk to the dudes that are like my age, maybe a little bit older. You know, I want to take you back to a time. The first start of like, you know, DVDs. 2006, 2005. I'm going to take you back with four simple letters. Are you ready? IGPX. The first Toonami original anime. The only, I think. The only Toonami original anime. It was unlike anything during its time. Yeah, you had mechs. But you had mechs racing at over 350 miles per hour. It was great. And at the center of it all, my boy Takashi. He piloted the forward pilot for Team Satomi. Now, this series is only two seasons long, 13 episodes each. And, you know, it comes out on Toonami every now and then, like 2, 3 in the morning. You'll be hard-pressed to really find stuff for it. But I'm your uncle. I'm different. I found something. I've been holding on to this for a couple weeks now. So I'll, I want y'all to see this. As what I can only really describe as a time capsule. This is an original, still sealed from 2005, IGPX DVD box set. Now y'all are like DVDs, but I come from a time before DVDs. I come from a time of VHS tapes. So I was alive with VHS tapes. We're at the tail end of their existence, you know, and they were replaced by DVDs. Now, this thing comes with a little bit more than a DVD. Now, what you're wondering? Well, shit, I'm about to show you. Let's see. Oh, I've been waiting so long. I've been bugging Kenny for this for like two weeks. It's the only thing that's been on this kid's mind fucking yeah, opening this IGP Xbox. And I can't even, where is it? So finally. We get to open this bad boy. I've been so, so excited. So, we're very excited. Oh, all right, Ooh. so, you know, now, 
on the box comes with a description of a few things in here, you know. First, this is our box. Very, very dope. Very, very dope. That is the forward mech. Inside is Takashi, the main character I was talking about. IGPX stands for Immortal Grand Prix. And I just love, love how this, that's actually a depiction of the track, like no BS. It's upside down, loop-de-loops, giant. There's a whole city built around it. It's a great sport. The time is, I believe, 2048, and it's just super, super future realistic. Like, not so realistic where it's like, oh, we moved to another planet and it's all crazy, but like, life is still kind of regular, but we have these giant robots that race, that we, that fight, that we like to watch. And I'm okay with that. Now, inside comes a DVD, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, Kenny, you know, look for the, uh, the little uh, PS2, because we're going to watch this 100 minutes of uncut footage. I don't even know what could be on here. It might just be the first episode. I really don't care. I'm excited. Now, it also comes with stickers. Now, these stickers are the logos for some of the old teams. Like, Velstein was the number one, uh, you know, number one team for a while. Team Sledge Mama, the, the Americans. Uh, team Satomi. Yeah, Team Black Egg, the Brazilian team. Team Edge Raid. I forget what country they're from. And then I... Oh, Team Skylark. Yeah, home, Homeboy's Girl was on that team. But this is nice. A little, little collection of all the teams with all their stickers. You know, Kenny said he has dibs on this one. I don't blame him. That Team uh, Sledge Mama sticker is pretty fire with the skull. That's fire. And then the thing I've been the most excited for. Oh, come here. Oh well, bloopers. Now, this is an IGPX t-shirt from 2005. I would have never thought I'd find something like this. Now, the shirt itself is very, very simple. Very, very simple. A little IGPX logo on the bottom. And you're probably like, why does it look like that? It's supposed to be a little like worn, like, you know, like they just got off the track, paint's all scuffed and everything. It's very, very simple. Very, very simple. But you want to know the best part? You ain't got it. <laughs> you ain't got it. You ain't got it. I'm surprised I have it. And I already know that this thing fits. Because let me tell you something about a box giveaway from 2006. Now when you want a t-shirt with something, you get the sizes, medium, large, small. Cool. Back in 2006, we didn't have that. It was one size fits all. You know what that size was? Big, extra large, sometimes double XL. For who? I don't know. One size fits all. That was the vibe back then. Big clothes, you know, fire anime. This is like one of the few times I'm going to condone CGI. The CGI and the mechs, the fights, incredible. Incredible. Real short, real sweet. You'll finish it in like a weekend if you like binge it all. But so worth it. So, so, so worth it. A great time in anime. A great time for Cartoon Network. I used to love it. That was when they had like that little afternoon block. So you could watch it on the afternoon days, uh, during the week, and then watch it on Saturday, um, on the weekends. Just a different time, a different, different time. But, you know, I wanted to show y'all everything new that I had. You know, my new pickups. This time capsule, the only way I could describe it. And, you know, we I got you with this new anime fit of the week. Oh, also, none of y'all can see me on the IGPX video game for PlayStation 2. I put money on it. All right. Heard peace. what he said. We back. <laughs> we back. What's good, everybody? Who's ready to get fly with the Uncle Willie song? Because today, we going Hunter Hunter. You see me, the Karapika tie-dye t-shirt from Hypeland. My minimal cargo, standard, standard. You know what I'm saying? Got my chain cardigan on from Chinatown Market. And lastly, but certainly not least, my Revenge of the Dreamers, Puma Clydes, you know what I'm saying? Covered in the word revenge. Because what was Karapika trying to do all show? Get revenge for his fallen people. If you like the fit, like the video. Comment. Tell me what you want to see me flexing next. Till next time, it was your Uncle Willie sign. Peace.